Good morning, me again, welcome back. Hey, those are some interesting looking things in your mouth. What are those, teeth? I did notice in my last video that a lot of you guys are from Europe. So I googled how to greet European people and supposedly we're supposed to kiss each other. Yeah, I'm not allowed to do that until I'm like 40 years old, but I'm glad you guys are here. Oh, and happy Pride Month to the LG TVs. For an LGDP, uh, LGT, LBG. Today, we're talking about teeth. One of the first things that you notice on a person's face, next to noticing if that person has a face. You have teeth, animals have teeth, even anime characters have teeth. It's a pretty common trait among things that are alive. Other than their original use of eating big bowls of salads and chewing things, someone's smile can give you a lot of information about that person. We're taught at a young age that teeth have a lot of value, specifically the first teeth that we have that end up falling out of our heads, and then we grow back new ones, like we're some sort of teeth-making machine. They're not just for aesthetics. You can get like $5 per tooth if you put it under your pillow at night and then let a stranger break into your room, which is kind of messed up now that I think about it. Here in North America, we have Elon Musk, capitalism, and the tooth fairy. I don't know about you, but if your childhood wasn't like this movie called Milk Teeth, then did you really have a childhood? It starts off with a boy at an orphanage doing his regular nighttime routine of taking care of his teeth with good old brushing and flossing. Maybe just flossing? Like, really hard flossing. Maybe that's a bit aggressive there, buddy. You already got all the cavities, and the ones from the future too. I've definitely flossed a little extra when I found out I was supposed to go to the dentist the next day, but not to the point when my tooth falls out. <sighs> After losing one of his teeth down the sink, our main protagonist, the orphan, is sad. Until this happens. Oh, so that's his name. Great, we don't have to refer to him as the orphan anymore. Thank you, creepy voice coming from the plumbing. After having a nice conversation with the terrifying voice instead of getting the hell out of there, Thomas finds out the voice is his friend, according to the voice coming from the sink. He's surprised since he doesn't have any friends, and they talk about his lost tooth. The voice asks Thomas how much he usually gets for a tooth, and he says 25 cents. Which is why I need you to give it back! I mean, which is why I need you to please give it back. The voice strikes up a bargain with Thomas, and instead of giving him back his original tooth, the voice gives him a special tooth that will apparently give him much more. Okay, I'm no dentist, but that looks more like a cavity than a tooth. But Thomas places the black tooth under his pillow and hopes for the best. Me too, Thomas. I don't have the heart to tell him that he might have gotten scammed. But that's what happens when you trust someone living in a sink. The next morning, the nuns start waking everyone up in a nunly fashion as nuns do, when Thomas sees that his rotten tooth actually made him a pretty good profit. That's way more than 25 cents. Do I dare say one dollar? Okay, I didn't know we had a Mr. Moneybags in this orphanage. Maybe they should take that money and invest in something else. Like, a nicer place to live, other than the sink? But I don't know, that's eccentric rich people for you. Since we are in an orphanage, families start coming over and are looking to adopt. Unfortunately, Thomas doesn't get chosen by any families. His missing tooth makes it so he can't compete with the other cuter and better looking orphans. Look on him. <sighs> He's so precious. Um, my name is Ava. My name is Richard. James, would you like to join our family? So he goes to the store with some disposable income and buys a hairbrush, hoping to look more presentable in the next round of orphan adopting. Okay, that's pretty rough. And what makes matters worse is that the hype house comes in and starts giving Thomas a hard time. It's a nice brush, Thomas. Where'd you get the money for it? If this was an alternate timeline, this would be the hungry house. Like we got Lil Huddy, Little Huddy, and the other one. They ask Thomas where he got the money from, and then proceed to make fun of him for not having any friends. How secure and mentally stable of them. <laughs> you don't have any friends! <coughs> Whoa, okay, that seemed a little personal. Did Thomas like hurt you and your family or something? Oh. Hey, look who's back, our friend from the sink. 
reaches beyond your wildest dreams. Just send one of your teeth down the drain. Who ends up persuading the boys to send some teeth down the drain in return for some money. Is it just me, or is this a weird way to run a business? But at least she keeps her promise, and all the orphans live happily ever after with their newfound way of earning money. They can add entrepreneur to their Instagram bios now. Oh, except for the fact that everyone in the orphanage catches wind of this sink dentist, and all of the boys start finding different ways to get rid of their teeth. It's not very creative, it mostly involves sinks and other objects to the face. But at least the economy is booming. The store owner can finally retire now. By the end of the movie, Thomas looks clean and presentable after buying a bunch of new items from the shop, and his appearance catches the eye of a nice looking couple. They like Thomas and ask him if he wants to join their family. We would be completely honored to be your parents, uh, if you would like us to be. But I think you'll find we would make a beautiful family. Speak up, boy. Ew. I'm curious, do other countries have the tooth fairy, or is that only here? I think this tradition and story started in Europe, so I would like to summon all the Europeans again, for your opinion. Moral of the story, teeth are very important and influence how people see you. Just wanted to share that with you after this movie popped up on my timeline, and I watched it while eating. I hope none of you guys are eating. There might be a deeper meaning to this movie, but I'm just pretending to be an English teacher, looking into something that might not have any meaning at all. The color of the curtain is blue, just like his heart. Or it might be pneumonia or something. And that brings us back to our reality, where good quality dental work is quite expensive and not everyone has access to a dentist. Having nice looking teeth is a sign of wealth, status, and health. Take a look at influencers and celebrities. When they start out in the business, they usually have regular looking normal human teeth, just like the rest of us. Eventually, their teeth will start shape-shifting, and all of a sudden, their smile becomes the most unnatural shade of white. I saw this TikTok account called Veneer Check run by Dr. Sarah. It's really interesting because she breaks down the dental work that these people might have gotten done based on her opinion as a prosthodontist. I hope I said that right. It's really thorough because she goes through each individual tooth with the before and after pictures. You can see the lateral incisors number 7 and number 10 are really short compared to the central incisors number 8 and 9 and the canines number 6 and number 11. In this photo you can tell that the bottom teeth are a lot more straight and evened out. The front teeth, you still have a little crowding of number eight and nine. It looks like at some point she got a veneer also in number eight and nine, but she kept a little bit of that crowding. You can see the length of the back teeth have become much longer now. In my opinion, these are veneers. I think they look great. Here we have younger Millie. She has number six and number 11 canines, which are far up and a little bit out, and lingually set number seven and number 10. Here we see her veneers, it looks like six through 11, and the shape is now different, it's more of a taper square. So round at the top and more square at the bottom. You guys know what I'm gonna say? I loved her initial teeth, but I'm sure she's very happy with this, and who wouldn't be? Here is the weekend with his natural teeth. I think he has referred to his two front teeth as his bunny teeth. I personally think that his teeth fit his face so well, and if he did want to make those teeth longer, he could just do a veneer on the lateral incisors. Here we can see a pretty apparent change in the front six to eight teeth. I want to say that these are maybe his temporary veneers. Temporary veneers are the plastic teeth that you wear while the lab is making your permanent veneers. These are his teeth now, and they look nothing like the previous photo. You can see he picked a very different color. This is probably in the bleaching shades. The other thing I see is that they are all one color. And I would have never known this if I didn't have someone that works with teeth to point it out for me. As a regular person, you just think, oh, they're rich celebrities. Maybe they're just eating good and spending all their money on nice clothes to keep up with appearances. When in reality, there's so much going on. K-pop idols, who are well known for getting very natural looking cosmetic procedures, also get a lot of dental work done. When I first started getting into K-pop, I didn't know that. I just thought it was genetics and luck. Taeyeon from Girls' Generation, a nine-member girl group, used to have more natural-looking teeth when she debuted in 2007 under SM Entertainment. Her bottom teeth were slightly crooked and things weren't super even compared to now. 
but she was still considered as one of the most attractive and prettiest members by the fans. Just goes to show you how the standards for idols and celebrity visuals have changed over the years. K-pop entertainment companies have this glow up effect, where all the idols age in reverse and somehow get prettier every comeback. Is it plastic surgery or is it something in their food? Beauty standards are becoming more prevalent and it's hard not to change yourself and keep up with appearances just to fit in. The standard used to be pretty close to the ground where people could reach it by working out and using makeup. But now you have to break through multiple ceilings, like looking 20 years old when you're actually 35, having perfect facial symmetry that only VTubers have, and owning teeth so white and straight that it feels like you're in a frat house. And there's nothing wrong with getting any type of cosmetic procedure done. These famous people in the public eye don't have to tell us if they got any work done at all. But it is helpful to the general public to know that if we have money and resources, then we can change our appearances too. It's reassuring to know that, oh, our teeth aren't bad just because they're slightly yellow and not completely straight. It's just that the average person doesn't have $80,000 to spend on veneers. This is Michael Appa. He spends most of his days flying between New York City and Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. He works on the smiles of Hollywood actors, reality TV stars, fashion models, and even royals. He's most sought after for his boutique porcelain veneers, which cost clients $4,000 a tooth and up to $80,000 for a full smile reconstruction. So when I first started in cosmetic dentistry, one th I'm sorry, that price? Is per tooth? Damn, some people really do be carrying a house or five Teslas in their mouth. This is what expensive and good quality dental work will get you. But sometimes it goes a bit too far in the opposite direction, especially with regular people that can't afford five Michelin star dental work. Another TikTok trend that I've been seeing is influencers getting veneers like it's just a typical Friday afternoon. Like this story of a girl that flew to another country to get veneers and it went terribly wrong. How'd you guess? <gasps> oh. You guys ever see gum in its package or play with Legos? I don't think there's a thing called Roadblocks teeth, but if it existed, this is what it would look like. I do feel bad. No one deserves to have their teeth messed up like that. But these comments are so funny. Someone said they look like acrylic nails. After watching a few more of her story times, it turns out she got her teeth done because everyone she knows has theirs done. Everyone has their teeth done there. Like all of the girls, they look after themselves so much and they have like bright white teeth. And I was like, I want to get my teeth done. And I was like, who's your dentist? I want to go to your dentist. And then we call her dentist and he's like, I'm chilling by the beach right now, enjoying the sun. I'm guessing her friend's teeth look pretty good, which is why she didn't question them or do any research on where they got them done. And then she's like, oh, my cousin's friend's friend's teeth looks really nice. You can go to his dentist. It's a combination of peer pressure, beauty standards, and a need to fit in with everyone else. So you can't really blame her. Okay, maybe there's a bit of blame here, cuz you didn't even look at one Yelp review. When I buy something, I read like 50 reviews and watch three YouTube videos on whether it's a good product or not. And it's usually for something that's like $50 compared to a $5,000 mouth transformation. Some TikToks make it seem really easy, like pay a respectable sum of $7,000 and in a few weeks, you'll have perfect straight white teeth. There's no mention of the upkeep and the risks of getting veneers only for aesthetic purposes in your 20s. They are not a one and done type of thing. You have to upkeep these forever and constantly get them replaced. It's expensive and there's no going back. All of the material that gets shaved off for the veneers, that stuff is supposed to be there to protect the insides of your teeth. It's like having permanent dentures that can get stained, chipped, or worn down. Not to mention the health of your teeth. This kind of treatment is so, so dangerous. So teeth have a certain thickness, obviously in the center is where the nerve of the tooth lives. Every time you prepare a tooth, you get closer to the nerve and you heat up the tooth, therefore compromising the nerve. So when you prepare the teeth to pegs like this, you compromise the nerve and ultimately you will need a root canal treatment and the tooth will eventually fail. That's called the restorative cycle of the tooth. 
Okay, so first of all, those are not veneers and those are full coverage crowns. If you've seen my previous video, you will know that shaving teeth down to pegs like that is gonna damage the nerve. Veneers or crowns will need to be replaced every 10 to 15 years typically. Not only the financial burden isn't gonna be an issue, secondly, it's gonna be a biological burden because the tooth physically can't be prepared and reprepared every single time. She's a gorgeous young lady and she's just ruined her teeth, possibly for the rest of her life and she's gonna have dentures what, by the age of 40. I personally wouldn't choose that. Would you? What if in 10 years, natural and uneven teeth become trendy again? What are the people with their little shark teeth gonna do? Actually, knowing us and how random society is, we'll probably find a way to make it happen. So what did we learn from this? Brush your teeth, floss every night, and if a voice ever starts talking to you from the sink, then call the plumber to get that sorted out. But hey, what's that other thing in the sink? I think it's the YouTube algorithm, and it's asking you to throw down a like and a comment on this video. It feeds on your engagement with my content, which also lets me pop up on your recommended with more fun topics and weird movies to talk about. Have a good day, try not to be dumb, and I'll see you in the next one.